Welcome to the Talk Star Podcast. Our first guest of the day is an interview with Guy Kawasaki. Guy is a chief evangelist of a、uh, well, former chief evangelist of Apple. Former chief evangelist of Apple. He's an entrepreneur, investor. Gla-、um, Guy took the time, his very busy day, of his very busy day, to.、Um, <laughs> To talk to me, and he advised me on.、Uh, well, he didn't specifically advise me on、uh, career paths, but he took some time to、um, talk about his career, investing, and he gave some、uh, old、uh, sage advice. He always clar.、Uh, he also clarified some things I was pretty curious about. So here's the interview of Guy Kawasaki. Like, I, I'm just gonna. I just wanna get、uh, ask you some questions, like.、Um, Like, because、yeah. I'm kind of curious about your journey and like, maybe like any advice for like young people. Because I'm like 28, <laughs> so yeah. So some people here they're asking like, because they ha- they haven't heard of you, so they they're saying like they want advice. <laughs> I want advice a little bit. Now speak to me, please. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Now,、yeah. now everything <laughs> is good. Now you can hear me. Yeah. Well, you know, I was changing my system settings, and it wasn't、mm. affecting the Zoom settings. So,、mm. I just I just adjusted the Zoom settings to match the system settings, and now everything、mm. is good. It's good. Yeah. Well, well,、um, thank you for taking the time to、uh, jump on this podcast. <laughs> of course, But,、uh... here we go. <laughs> Yeah. So,、uh, would you would you like to introduce yourself? Because we're also we're on live too. So some people are asking, like,、um, what's your routine? That's <laughs> anyway. Okay. So my name is Guy Kawasaki. I am chief evangelist of Canva, and I am the host of the Remarkable People podcast. Recently, I wrote a book. It's called Think Remarkable. So that's also what I do, and I have a Substack newsletter. I live in Santa Cruz, California. In my past, I used to work for Apple as chief evangelist. I was on the Wikipedia board of trustees. I was the Mercedes-Benz brand ambassador. I worked、uh, for an advisor as an advisor for the、uh, the CEO of the Motorola division of Google. So basically, I've spent my life in tech in Silicon Valley, and now I'm a writer and speaker and podcaster. Some people ask, like, they've got some questions. It's like、um, they're asking your routine, but、um, my routine. I, <laughs> what's your routine for? Like, I guess it's mostly young people. I'm I'm also twenty eight, so like, is they're asking for, like advice. I'm also curious on them.、Um, they're asking、okay. what what's your journey? Yes. <laughs> uh, wait, I'll give you my routine first. So,、mm. I usually wake up about oh. Four thirty or five o'clock, and almost every day I have one cup of coffee. I have one piece of wheat toast covered with peanut butter and a sliced banana. So that's what I start off eating. And then I know I shouldn't do this, but I check my social media, I check my email, and then you know, an hour later, I'm saying, "Oh shit, I should really get to work." And then. So then I start. I do research for my podcast. I edit my podcast. I do writing for my Substack newsletter.、Um, yeah, and then typically I go surfing once a day. So that takes like three hours out of my day. And then I come back, and then I do more of this.、Uh, so I don't have a very exciting routine. I just kind of sit here and grind it out. Now, as far as my story, I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii,、uh, lower middle income part of Honolulu, and. Uh, you know, thank you, God, that a sixth grade teacher convinced my parents to put me into a college prep system, so that they took me out of the public school system, put me in a private school.、Uh, that led me to getting into Stanford, and at Stanford, I found the easiest major I could, which was psychology.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I also became friends with a guy named Mike Boych, who became very big in my life of next few years. After college, I went to law school for, believe it or not, a grand total of about two weeks, and then I quit law school. I went back to Hawaii,、uh, worked for the lieutenant governor's office. Then I came back and got an MBA at UCLA. And while I was at UCLA, I worked for a jewelry manufacturer, counting diamonds and 
after I got my MBA, I worked for that company for a few years, became VP of sales and marketing. And then I got recruited into the Macintosh division of Apple by Mike Boych. And I was software evangelist and I helped uh, make Macintosh successful with developers. And then I started some software companies, became a venture capitalist. And, and like I said, today I'm chief evangelist of Canva. So that's my, you know, mm. by my, uh, my function here. Mm. I, I read, uh, I think, a, on like an article, it said you are the first person that came up with the word evangelist or like, that's, well, how got that's not <laughs> true. I mean, uh, you know, there was Jesus yeah. before me. Um, yeah. Mm. So I was the second software evangelist at Apple. And the first one mm. was this guy named Mike Boych, who hired me into Apple because he knew me from college. And the word evangelism comes from a Greek term that means bring the good news. So what we did is we brought the good news. And the good news of Macintosh was that for a developer, finally, you could write the software you always wanted to write because of the richness of the software in um in the ROMs of Macintosh. And so that's that's what evangelism was uh, back then, you know, spreading mm. the good news of Macintosh. Mm. Would you, because um, there's like a recent rise of like people using ChatGPT and AI, like would you recommend like going into this field? Because I, try, I tried learning it, <laughs> but like, mm, yeah, but it's not really something you work on currently, right? like AI, I, this is I a random question. That, yeah. I think that AI is a mm. huge, huge development, uh, mm. probably bigger than the industrial revolution or the computer revolution. I think that AI is gonna fundamentally change the world. And I use chat GPT or I use perplexity or uh, Claude or Gemini. I use it every single day. And there are constantly times I say to myself, how the hell did you ever do this before? Uh, I use ChatGPT to write this book, Think Remarkable. I use it as a research assistant. Um, I don't, it's kind of weird. I, I know I freak people out when I tell them that, but I, I think that ChatGPT or maybe AI as a group of technology, I think that's God. It's God. Mm. It's God mm. giving a manifestation on this earth. Mm. Cause I I tried I tried to teach it like to myself like try to understand it because apparently it's a machine that um trains on a lot of data so I it's I thought I thought it was an intelligence but it's I don't know if it's as smart as I thought it was but anyway <laughs> well but, I mean yeah. you know I mm. think you're thinking too much that mm. it, it it's a tool I mean it would be like let's say you met somebody really knowledgeable mm. about almost everything. And this person was available to you 24 by seven by 365. You could mm. talk to this person or you could type to this person. And this person would never lose patience with you, never get pissed off, never ask for money and come back with very good information. So imagine you had that human friend. Well, your human friend is called ChatGPT. And mm. I mean, I, 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 I encourage mm. you to embrace it. I mean, yeah, you I, know, I, you, I you use... could have you could have gone to ChatGPT and say, "I'm interviewing Guy Kawasaki in mm. half an hour. What kind of questions should I ask I, him?" I, and I, I, I asked him, I asked him that, and also I heard in the podcast that someone also asked asked because it's also it's trained on data, so I wasn't sure if it's actually correct. Like, because it's it's still like a machine training, learning the human language, so. Anyway. Well, but I mean, yes, I mean, you know, just enough to be dangerous. Mm. I mean, I know that too. And I don't know how it can possibly come up with such great answers if it's just looking for the frequency of which, you know, some syllables follow mm. other syllables. I mean, I look at that, I said, like, that doesn't sound very mm. intelligent to me. And, and then mm. I tell you what, you, you go to chat GPT, where do you live? I live uh, in Manchester, in England. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so you 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 go to ChatGPT and you say, uh, should Americans teach the history of slavery to its young people? And you you type that question in, and it's going to give you five or six reasons why 
it's important to teach the history of slavery. Now, when it gives you those very good reasons, you say to yourself, how the hell did it come up with those five cogent reasons? Just looking at the mathematical frequency of syllables following each other. And I'm telling you, I don't know how. I don't know how, but I'm telling you that ChatGPT, if you ask it that question, it'll give you a more intelligent answer than 99.9% .9 of the mm. politicians in America. Because mm. I, I, I think I read it once that it was smarter than most humans. That's why I think I spent a lot of hours on ChatGPT. <laughs> I think it's smarter than day. every human, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, mm, but it's also because AI, because I, I, I tried diving into machine learning courses on Coursera. There's like guys teaching it and they're saying like it can do what's called hallucinations, which are given answers that seem real, but aren't actually real. So it's not infallible, but it's pretty useful. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay, but yeah. again, I'm telling you, you're thinking too much. So that's like saying, oh yeah, mm. uh, AI <laughs> can have hallucinations and give you inaccurate answers. Well, I hate to tell you, pal, but so yeah. can humans, right? <laughs> so if you if you went to yeah. if you went yeah. to a Republican politician in America and asked them, should I take Clorox mm. to cure my COVID? Yeah. The Republican politicians would say, Yeah, you should. Clorox is gonna fix your COVID. Don't worry, you don't need to get vaccinated. Mm. Okay, well, I mean, that's pretty stupid and that's hallucination. You don't say, Well, I'm gonna stop mm. listening to humans. So what's the difference? Yeah. I'm not I'm not saying mm. you should believe anything from everything, including people. But you mm. cannot say that, oh, AI had some hallucinations. I don't trust AI. I'm going to stick yeah. to my human sources. I'm going to ask Donald Trump, how should I treat my COVID? Yeah. Oh, he says take Clorox. Oh, I'll take Clorox. Mm. Go ahead. Drink some Clorox. Mm. Yeah, it is pretty useful. And also, um, yes, I guess I saw it. Mm, partially, I saw it. Well, you did you do venture capital for a very long time? Like I do, did. Do you recommend? Yeah. Do you recommend that industry? Because I feel like everyone, when I look at their profile, they're like very academically smart, like Oxford, Cambridge, that sort of background. And I went to someone called LLC for economics, but I sort of had the background, but I don't have the experience. Like, would you recommend this sort of industry? Like, no, nope. like, uh, I do no? not recommend venture capital at all. Um, oh. I think that. Venture capital, if you become a venture capitalist, it should be mm. at the very end of your life. It should be mm. just before you die, actually. Um, mm. I think that venture capital is to be a good venture capital. And by that, I mean that you really help your portfolio companies. You have to have a very deep and broad set of experiences so mm. that you know that you know this is how companies work. These are the mistakes you make. This is how to prevent the mistakes you make. So mm. if you are if you are young and you you know you haven't really worked in any other industry maybe you, you were a consultant for Accenture or McKinsey and then mm. you work for I don't know Goldman Sachs and now you say okay I want to be a venture capitalist uh, because mm. they have Gulf streams and you know everybody mm. sucks up to them and everybody <laughs> thinks venture capital is yeah. cool and I yeah. I want to make you know, I want to make this one and a half million dollar base salary with mm. potential to make 50 million a year. I want to be a venture capitalist and I will take all my knowledge that I accumulated from McKinsey and Accenture and Goldman Sachs. Mm. You don't know shit about yeah. how the company, how the, how the world really works. Yeah, Cause I saw a classmate of mine, he's in venture capital at Sequoia, but like, I don't know how the guy got in. Uh, like he's only one year older than me, but, but, that's why I'm asking. And then yeah, also, but you I know saw what? that. I mean, yeah. right now he's carrying around some partner's bags and he's sucking up to that partner. Mm. And, you know, that partner who probably has never run a company is like giving his opinions about, oh, this is how you make this work. This is what you should do. This one you shouldn't do. And your friend mm. is picking all that up. And then if he sticks in that business, having never run anything, pretty soon he's going to be telling mm. entrepreneurs like you, oh, this is how you create a company. And if you were mm. to ask him, well, how do you know how to create a company? You say, I'm a venture mm. capitalist, you know, and I went to uh, Oxford and I worked for McKinsey and I went for Sequoia. Uh, but, you know, have you actually run a company? Have you mm. fired somebody? Have you hired somebody? Have you actually shipped the product or all you've been doing is like flying around in your private jet, sucking up. I mean, you really uh, so not, you'll know how I feel. <laughs> uh, so you're saying it's like, it's 
I don't really fully understand. It's sort of like a form of consulting by students who have good grades, right? That's basically. I'm 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 not saying that's the entire industry, but yeah, I think I get a gist of <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah, I. Yeah. Basically, I mean, you know, most of them have finance backgrounds, and a finance mm. background is not the same as an operational background. Hmm, it's interesting because um also because I listen to well. Like the, there's some guy called Naval, and he always talks about like, was it like to get rich? You, you either do media or coding. Would you recommend software engineering then? Like, well, yeah. I mean, mm. you know, it, you I, I, it, I you mm. cannot re recommend a career mm. for people based mm. on how much money you'll make. I mean, it takes mm. a lot of other things like. Are you interested? Like, if you're not interested in being a programmer, I'm not going to tell you to be a programmer. And, mm. and on the other hand, if you're interested in programming, I'm not going to tell you to be a marketer. So, mm. you you know, it's it's a cross-section of what you like to do, what you're good at doing, and what you can make money doing. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's not the same as, oh, I should go into software engineering because, mm. you know, it seems like everybody makes money in that business. Mm. Yeah, that's what that's because I'm teaching myself coding, but it's not it's not like I wake up and I just wanna stare at the code all day. But like I'm I'm still trying. But um I guess like because people say money is not happiness, and I, I listen to a lot of podcasts to, to be honest, like listening to podcasts doesn't really make me that like it it feels like I'm doing something, but I'm not actually like progressing that much, but anyway. Um well, how yeah. old are you? I'm 28. Well, pal, yeah. you got 60 more years to figure it out. So, you know, yeah. what? nobody knows what they're doing at 28. Mm. I think the first 40 years of your life, you're still learning. And mm. The second 40 years of your life, you're just reaping. You're not sowing anymore. So, mm. so chillax, mm. bro. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. are you married? No, no. I, Do you want to yeah. get married? Yeah, I want to get married, but also there's oh. like trying to find a partner and like okay, how do you even okay. Uh... So <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of similarity between you know marriage and your perfect career. Like, hmm. so you know, do you just decide one day I'm gonna get married? So God, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna meet the woman. I'm gonna marry her. Like you know, I have a schedule. I gotta get on this schedule. I gotta get married. Hmm. Yeah. No, you sample a lot <laughs> and you date around and then someday you hope you meet that perfect person for you. But, you know, mm. it, it, you cannot force some things. You got to sample. You got to pay the price. Mm. So chillax. Huh? Yeah, because people say that you got to try. What was that? I, I heard Gary V say, like, you got to try a lot of different things to find out what you like. Yeah. And yeah, it's like. But then, so you don't recommend like I got to get married by thirty, like you know, some kind of job by thirty. That's not like unnecessary pressure on yourself, right? Like, I not yeah. I don't I think that's crazy because you know mm. I think you should get married when you meet the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Even that mm. is only 50-50 probability. So I I mm. don't know how you set a schedule for that. <laughs> now, I, don't yeah. get me wrong. I'm not saying you mm. shouldn't have goals. Everybody should mm. have goals, but. You know, there's some things you just you just cannot put a timeline to. So, you know, do a lot of sampling, whether it's mm. dating or careers. And then, mm. you know, it's very, as Steve Jobs said in his pod, not his podcast, as Steve Jobs <laughs> said in his commencement address, mm. you can only connect the dots looking backwards. You cannot connect the dots looking forward. So, mm. um Hmm. I, th I think, yeah. you know, I can say this because I'm Asian and you're Asian. I think it's <laughs> because we're Asian. Yeah. We got this thing yeah. that, you know, we got a, like tiger moms and tiger dads. Yeah, it's, and it's also get it all my, figured out. Yeah, my, my, my parents are pretty impressive. I don't get married. Like I'm, I'm just sitting at home making social media. Because I, I, I would try to be an influencer, but I found it extremely hard. So like now I'm <laughs> looking, should I do coding? Should I get into like venture capital? Like, because maybe, because I have... I was pretty smart academically, but I'm not the, like the smartest. So, so it's one of those things. You know what? I, I, let me yeah. tell you something. You don't have to be the smartest to be the most successful. You don't have to be mm. the smartest to be the happiest either. You just have mm. to find something you like to do and you're good at. I mean, that, mm. listen, I mean, you know, my, my parents wanted me to go to law school, right? So I went to law school after college and I quit after two weeks and mm. that, 
that was like a major shock to the system. I had never quit anything in my life before. And, you know, I'm like yeah. 2000 years of my family worked to get me into law school and I quit after two weeks. I mean, you know, what kind of a loser am I? And mm. now I look back and, you know, that happened when I was, I don't know, 22 or something. And now I'm 70 and I look back, I say, thank God I quit law school. I mean, mm. so yeah. You never know. I'm just... You know, I mean, it's one thing if you're just like sitting around smoking marijuana all day. Okay, that's mm. one thing. But just stay in the game, man. Just stay in the game. Mm. Yeah, just try try a lot of different things. Um, I guess. You probably don't want my parenting advice. <laughs> <laughs> or, or is your parent? I don't. I don't have kids though. But do you? Do you, do you want to share that? <laughs> I don't know what else that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, do you have parenting advice? <laughs> I mean, it's mostly it's no, mostly, no. I'm I think it's giving most... you parenting advice. <laughs> You're giving me parent. Okay, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Um, yeah, because I'm still confused. Like, because I would have thought, because uh, as a kid, you might have think, oh, 25 just people get married. But I'm like 28 now. I'm still like just as confused. Anyway, <laughs> you know what? But, um... I mean, people who got married at 25, God bless them. I mean. Hmm. You know, I mean, if all your friends got married at 25 and bought Mercedes, would you do that too? I mean, with you know, mm. yeah, I, I don't think I would, but I went to, yeah, I went to one of those. It's also like, was it like comparisons like the Thief of Joy? And um, I did go to school where everyone's like doing banking and consulting, but I don't think that's like my passion, though. That's the thing, but <laughs> it's yeah. not my passions at all. I don't think consultants. Mm. I don't think consultants, they they don't, you know, they, they, they tell people what to do having never mm. done it. Yes. That, I don't like that either, but the, I, my friend was consulted. And it, it, yeah. But, but anyway, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's not it's generally a good thing, but I think it's better. I guess the venture capitalist has entrepreneurial experience. That makes more sense, but you say most yeah, of them well, don't. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know there was so many career venture capitalists, like if without having started the company, but. Anyway. I mean, um, and that makes no sense. I mean, that may that hmm. that would be like, oh, I want to be a brain surgeon, but you know, I never operated on a brain. But I've yeah. been I've been watching the operation room for like you know two years. I'm ready to cut open your head. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it's also like it's something completely. It's like re reading about basketball versus playing. It's completely different. Like I guess. Would you would you recommend like moving to the US if I'm from England? Because England is not, I wouldn't say like it's very exciting. <laughs> it's just random. I don't know what else that has, but yeah. Uh well, I mean, it kind of depends on what you wanna do, right? I mean, hmm. if if you wanna I, I would make the case that if you wanna make movies, you move to LA. If you wanna start a tech company, you move to Silicon Valley. But I hmm. will tell you that. Yeah, there are many factors that cause the success of a tech company. And being in Silicon Valley is helpful, but it is not sufficient, hmm. nor is it necessary. You can start a tech company almost any place that has good internet access. Hmm. Uh, and, and, and to think that, you know, you get on a plane, you land at SFO, and all of a sudden... The streets are are lined with gold, and you're going to be a successful tech entrepreneur. You're going to be the next Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, I hate to tell you, but if that were true, more people would be flying to San Francisco. I mean, it it's helpful, but it is not necessary nor sufficient. Mm. So, like, because one of the advice is like you you should work for someone you want to be like, or like you should start you should join a startup because you learn more than joining a corporate would you recommend any of those like it's hard kind of hard to work for someone you want to be like though because how do you decide who you want to be like but, well <laughs> that's why you shouldn't yeah. work for a lot of people i mean <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you don't know uh I, you know you you just have to collect a lot of data and mm. i mean you're talking to a guy who quit law school went into the jewelry <laughs> business and ended up yeah. in software right so yeah. you, you wouldn't exactly say oh you know, guy, when you were 18, you had this plan and you said, okay, <laughs> I'm going to end up in tech. And to end up in tech, 
I'm going to major in psychology and then I'm mm. going to go to law school for two weeks and then I'm going to get an MBA in psychology and then I'm going to go work for a jewelry manufacturing company and all of that is so that I can work for Apple. Uh, that makes mm. no sense whatsoever. None mm. whatsoever. So so it's like that graph that it's like squiggly lines where you, you go up, <laughs> but you don't know where, where it's I, yeah. I think to say that it's squiggly <laughs> lines yeah. would be overly positive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, someone someone here asks what makes a company sufficient, but I don't I don't know I don't I don't get what they're asking you, but but anyway. What um, makes a company sufficient? Yeah, it's just someone in my live chat asking me that, but um, that's their question. But I'm, I'm, what do you what do you think they mean by sufficient? Uh, I, ask them, dude. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe because I think you used the word sufficient before, and then I don't know what they're asking. It's it's it, um. Oh, no, I guess. Oh, what did, what else did they ask? Like um. Yeah, like, how do you work for someone? Do, do you recommend that advice? Because Gary said you should work for someone you want to become. But how do you even get access to someone you want to become, though? Anyway. Well, you know, I, I, uh, let me translate what Gary's saying. Gary's saying yeah. that in order to get true industry insight and expertise, you should work for a person in a position like mm. you think you want. Ah. So if, you know, if you want to be a podcaster, go work for mm. a podcaster. If you want to mm. be a, you know, CEO of a software company, go be the, the chief of staff of a, you know, software company executive. Or if you want to be e-commerce, go to work for a executive at Amazon and, and learn what they truly do. Now, as you point out. Yeah, everybody would love to have been the chief of staff of Jeff Bezos, right? But he only <laughs> had one. And so, you know, there's only, guess what? There's only 500 Fortune 500 CEOs. That means there's only 500 chief of staff. So that's a small pool. So um, hmm. I think the spirit is true and it's a good idea. I think the numbers are very difficult, but I mm. would say that, you know, if you want, if you think you're interested in e-commerce, guess what? Go work for an e-commerce company. Mm. You don't have to be chief of staff to the CEO. Just go work for an e-commerce company. And, you know, you, you may think it's all like, oh, I just got to do A-B testing on my homepage and then, you know, thousands of people are going to click on this and, and then they're going to buy it. And it's so easy to fulfill. And, you know, there's hardly any returns and there's no breakage and, and, you know, uh, nobody ever tries to beat the system. And then you're going to go work for Amazon. You're going to say, holy shit. I mean, like our drivers are stealing from us. The packages are being stolen from the porches. People call us up saying, you know, my my Amazon account says it was delivered. It's not on my porch. Or you know, I I bought this camera for ten grand, and you know, I opened it, didn't work. I want to send it back. And you know, you might learn that e-commerce ain't all it's cracked up to be. But you would not know that just by reading about it, right? You gotta go hmm. serve on the front line. Hmm. We gotta try it out. Um... So do you have any job? I, I'm basically asking about jobs because I'm, I'm in that phase where I'm find, find, trying to find the right career. But um, Everybody's trying to find the right career. Everybody. Yeah. The Everybody, people who yeah. say they found the right the career, yeah, it, I mean, they're like a very tiny minority. I mean, how many people do you know of any age that you say, mm. are you in the right career? How many would say, mm. absolutely, yes, I'm perfectly <laughs> happy where I am? Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's a high percentage. Mm. Yeah, it, it must be a very. I'm small... seven years old. I'm still searching for my perfect career. Ah, uh, so it's it's like a forever search. Hmm. Because I feel like it my is. parents. I still have, yeah, yeah. I still have <laughs> The found search it, but, is yeah. the reward. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Um. So they they they're saying like before the question they're asking is like how how do how do you make it survive, continuous growth, and achieve the goals out out for it. That's that's their question. I think they were asking maybe how do you make a company survive, but I guess profitability. Anyway. Well, I mean, I, you yeah. know, this, this sounds kind of an insult, but the way you make a company survive is 
you provide something people want and are willing to pay for. I mean, it's not mm. rocket science. It's now mm. it's not rocket science to understand oh, yeah. that's what you gotta do, but it is rocket science and a lot of luck to actually do it. Mm. Actually, how so do you like how do you right. spot opportunities then? Like, because Gary Vee is clearly very good at that, but I, I don't, I don't feel like I have that skill, or at least I'm not training on that skill to like spot. Because some people are good at spotting opportunities. Well, before it okay, I'll, I'll give you yeah. several paths to that, and that I discuss in my book, Think Remarkable. So, you know, mm. one path is you make the product that you want to use, and then you hope that you're not a psychopath and you're the only person who wants to use it, right? So, mm. Steve Wozniak made the Apple One because he wanted to use the Apple One. Luckily, there was more than one person who wanted to use the Apple One, and that's why mm. Apple is a trillion-dollar company today. So that's one path. Another path is you work backwards from the customer. So instead of you know, doing what you like to do, you see what the customer needs, and then you do whatever the customer wants, not necessarily what you want, right? And so you know, I, I, I talked to an entrepreneur today. And he tells me that, oh, we want to be the best online ad marketplace for travelers. And to do that, he has this tool to help travel, which is very different from saying, this is very different from saying, you know, I'm going to build what I want because I like doing this. You have to work the other way, which is I'm going to build what the customer wants, not what I want. So that's another theory. Uh, another theory is you actually go and see or go and be the customer. So you actually, you know, you experience what these people are experiencing and uh, like, I don't know, to use a non-entrepreneurial example, you know, if, if you were running a factory and the factory is just not producing stuff, you can either look at the reports or you can go on the factory floor and watch how the factory is making stuff that's going and seeing but going and being means that you actually work on the factory floor as a worker and you see what's going on. So hmm. you can either like, these are three big paths. And, but the, the commonality of all these paths is that the best way to make a company successful is you alleviate pain. So you look for pain, hmm. wherever there's pain, there's profits to be made. Yeah, because someone said, "What well, was like you? You you should try to solve your own problem." But then I have many problems, but like there's a lot of them, <laughs> <laughs> I try to solve. Like it's I ask other people how to solve it. Like I clearly, and also, you know, some people, you know, some people build software around it. I don't think, I think it's gonna be quite hard to like build software by yourself. So I don't know if I can attempt that. <laughs> anyway. But let me tell you something. Mm. Everything is quite hard. So mm. you know, if if you're looking for that thing where like it's going to be so obvious and going to be so easy and it's going to be so <laughs> fast and so lucrative, yeah. guess what? I hate yeah. to tell you, that ain't how the world works. So you yeah, know it, what? it doesn't like, exist. Because maybe you like... should go work for McKinsey and Goldman Sachs, so you don't have to think about this, and you just need to suck up to mm. the partner. Mm. Yeah, but that's probably why. Because a lot of my classmates are doing that. They're like. It was like a school where everyone's like a wannabe investment banker and then they go into private equity. Do you recommend that software? Because I've never tried it, but I have an economics degree. But know. also, you know, yeah, I would be the worst person in the world to talk about why you should be an investment banker or consultant. <laughs> Literally, I'm yeah. the worst person. Uh, so if all yeah. your friends are listening to this podcast, I think you should hang up right now. No, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Like they're not, <laughs> I'm not. Because I graduated seven years ago, so it's not like a recent phenomena. I'm just like, I, I, I just listen to like so much Gary Vee stuff and he's like, make, go make content. But I've, I made like content for like four years and I have got like following on TikTok. It's, it's still, it's not, it doesn't get easier. I think it gets more difficult because there's more, a lot of people making videos anyway. Yeah. But yeah, um... but I mean, you know what? I, I, I... But you can substitute almost anything for what you said, right? So mm. you know, oh, I've been, <laughs> I've been, you know, I've had, I have a, a food truck for four years, and mm. nobody likes what I make, <laughs> or yeah. I wrote software, nobody wants like a, like likes what I make, mm. or I mm. have been a painter and nobody buys my painting, and oh, mm. I play guitar, but nobody buys my recordings, and I mean. Mm. I hate to tell you, that's just how the world works. So you can do uh, it by trial and error or, you know, but 
that if listen, if I could just tell you on a podcast exactly <laughs> what to do and you make yeah. you rich, believe me, I would yeah. charge you to be on your podcast. Ah, uh, I see. So there's no like, because also like a lot of the advice given on the internet is quite general. But like, do you think like specific advice given by a person where you talk to them is it's, it's got to be better, right? Like, especially if that person knows you. But then there's not well, many people that know you that well. I guess. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, even that's a complicated question, right? Because mm. someone who knows you, that doesn't mean that they're smart about the industry, mm. right? Like if you, if you, your mother truly knows you, you're going to ask her advice about how you should make video. Mm. Good luck no. with that. Like, you know, yeah. mom, mom, what should I do for TikTok? What's TikTok, son? Okay, she knows yeah. you well. She doesn't know anything mm. about TikTok. Now, on mm. the other hand, you could have some TikTok expert and ask them, but that person mm. doesn't know you any, any mm. at all. So it's kind mm. of a combination. Uh, but you know what? What you should do is like Gary Vaynerchuk says: is like if you are interested in making video, then go work for someone who's successful at TikTok. And mm. if you want to start a restaurant, go work for a successful restaurant owner. Mm. Um, you know, not necessarily your mother or father, unless they own the restaurant. Mm. Yeah. Because I guess the person who's best at it is Mr. Beast, but like Mr. Beast lives in <laughs> the US, but anyway. Um, hmm. You know, I'll give you one more piece of advice. <laughs> Don't believe all the so-called experts on the internet, myself included. Mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I Cause... listened to Gary for a long time, but I re now realize, well, I don't know Gary personally, but um, obviously no one's hundred percent correct. Right. And it's also like quite general advice given to the public. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. um, it's, it's quite general and it's also, <sighs> I mean, it's, mm. You know, we're, we're, listen, mm. you think of all the influencers, right? So mm. if you, if you came across a really successful influencers, you know, like 30 million followers makes 2 million a year on YouTube. Wait, I got to sneeze. Mm. That's fine. That's why they have mute buttons. So like, so let's say you, you meet this person at 30 million followers on YouTube, makes $2 million a year on, on YouTube, right? So if you wanted to be a YouTuber, then yeah, I say go listen to that person. But that person doesn't necessarily know how to give general career advice. That person just was successful on YouTube. That doesn't mean mm. that person can advise you how to be a programmer. Um, mm. Yeah. So I, you know, it's, it's, it's really tricky because on the one hand, you know, you should listen to what other people say. On the other hand, you should ignore what people say. And the yeah. hard part is figuring out, you know, when to do which one. Mm, um, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's figuring out. Uh, wait, I gotta, I'm gonna uh, take a course, picture of this. My, my wife is sending me messages about what she wants me to do right now. And I'm going to send her this. <laughs> so she understands that. I'm in the video. I'm in the middle of a podcast. Okay. <laughs> uh, so what else? What else would you, what? What else? Ask. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know what else to ask. Um. I guess. Yeah, because. Um, I don't know how. Well, so I mean, here, let, let me summarize for you. So I think that, you know, you have to collect a lot of data. You have to try a lot of things. You have to have a growth mindset. You need to chillax because, you know, don't compare yourself with others who you think, oh my God, they went to Goldman Sachs and they're already almost a partner and they're making five times more yeah. than me. And, you know, they're the same yeah. age because. Yeah. That's exactly That's not how necessarily I the path to happiness. And, you know, they're yeah. driving a BMW yeah. and I'm driving a Prius. Okay. So, you know, that you got to look beyond superficialities like that. So just mm. give yourself some time, do a lot of data sampling. When things interest you, pursue them until they no longer interest you. And mm. d don't set yourself up for failure by thinking, oh, I got to find my quote passion i gotta find this thing that instantly i mm. fall in love with and i'm really great at it and i'm making a lot of money right away because 
that, that's like a unicorn farting pixie dust. There's not too many mm. unicorns farting pixie dust in the real world. So mm. just chillax and maintain a growth mindset. You know, you try a lot of things. But the flip side of a growth mindset, you have to understand, is grit. Mm. So you got to to pay the price. In the first third of your career, you're gonna be mm. underpaid and overworked. In the second third mm. of your career, you're gonna be overpaid and underworked. And the final mm. part of your life, you just pay it back. Mm. That's how you should think about it. So you're yeah. right now in the phase of you're underpaid and overworked. Get used to it, mm. Rob, because that's just how it works. Mm. Yeah. I, okay. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Because that was in that was in your book right because i heard that in your podcast but anyway but i guess you explained it <laughs> yeah yeah all right um, huh yeah um yeah it's it was like the icky guy because right now i like making content so i'm just not good at it right like i'm not like the best at it but it's just one of those things <laughs> anyway yeah listen you but, know what i mean you take the world's greatest chef Okay, I, I don't know who that is, Bobby Flay or Andrew Zimmern or, you know, whoever, whoever's the world's greatest chef, Salt Bay, whoever that is. I bet you those people, they started washing dishes. Mm. You know, they, they, they didn't become the world's greatest chef in six months. You got to pay the price. Mm. I'm telling you, you have to pay the price. Okay, so, yeah, I guess, um, I don't know what else. Thank, thank you for your time then. Like, do you, um, is there any... My pleasure, I... Okay. I hope I didn't scare too many people. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Okay, thank you for your time. All guys. right, uh, take care. Have a good day. Bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye, bye. So once again, thank you, guy, for doing the podcast. Top takeaways from <laughs> this podcast: what I learned was basically um, that no one really has it figured out. Even my own parents are figuring out. There's enormous pressure in Asian household to get married, have children find the right career, find a job, right? Um, also, basically, what I got a sense of is that you are forever searching for the right career for yourself. There's no right career. Um, you got to sample and try a lot of different things so you can learn more and more about yourself. Um, this applies to dating relationships too, sampling, dating different people, trying out, dating as many people as you can. That's probably a good strategy. Trying to figure out what you like, um, career thing trying to find out what you like but you're also good at that also pays well he said this is a unicorn and it's pretty uncommon that most someone has something they like and also um they're also good at he says most people are not fully satisfied with their career which sounds fully true um and only a handful of people have it have that sort that part of their life sorted so it's a forever search um and what else? Oh yeah, the spotting opportunities thing. So once again, thank you for listening to the first pod, uh, talk style uh, podcast. I hope you guys uh, join me next time. <laughs>